The Murashishti frigate of the Romanian naval forces brings many questions to minds. Why did Romania dare to design and build such a ship locally? Why has she failed? Or is it fair to describe her as a failure? Why has Romania kept operating this surface combatant? As the weapon detective, we're now investigating the Murashishti and seeking answers to these questions. The frigate Mrasheshti is the largest warship of the Romanian Navy ever built in Romania. Once upon a time she was classified as cruiser first and destroyer later. As a fruit of a highly daring program, this surface combatant has always been an intriguing vessel. Yet, as a warship, she has not been considered a success. Due to its geographical position, Romania had not needed naval investments since it gained independence. So. Bucharest's major naval expansion program in the late 1970s surprised the world. More interestingly, this country, which had previously built only fast attack craft, did not want to acquire new naval vessels from the USSR. It planned to design and construct one cruiser, five frigates, two mine layers, four minesweepers, and two large logistic ships locally. Naturally, the biggest surprise was the so-called cruiser. In the late 1970s, the largest surface combatants of the Romanian Navy were three 580 tons Project 204 class corvettes whose NATO reporting name was Poti. The eccentric dictator of Romania, Nicolae Ceausescu, ordered that only Romanian engineers would work on this project. It would be a tremendous challenge for Romania, which was inexperienced in this field. Besides, this country did not have the necessary know how and infrastructure for the related subsystems, such as naval weapons engines and electronics. Romania, a Warsaw Pact member, could not buy from the West. So, these components would eventually be acquired from the USSR, but they would be produced under license in Romania. Still, Romania had to settle with some semi-obsolete ones since the Soviet policy did not allow selling the latest technology systems. The ship, defined as Krujishator Usar Port Helicopter by the Romanian Navy, meaning Light Helicopter Cruiser, was laid down on August 7, 1979, launched on June 4, 1981, and commissioned on August 2, 1986. She was initially given the name Muntenia. However, sea trials unveiled many flaws. Alongside the position of missile launchers, the heavy and high superstructures and masts negatively affected the ship's stability. Besides, Muntenia did not have roll stabilizers. Therefore, she couldn't use her weaponry effectively even at low sea states and was unsuitable for helicopter operations. In the late 1980s, the Romanian Navy, which already suffered from manpower and fuel shortages, deactivated the ship. So, the cruiser returned to the shipyard in June 1988 to improve her stability. During this work, the Ceausescu regime collapsed in 1989 and Romania began to suffer political and economic instabilities. Everyone thought it was the end for Muntenia. But the Romanians surprised the world again. Romania did not give her up. In 1990, the ship was renamed as Mrasheshti and was reclassified as Distigator, meaning destroyer. The reconstruction works, including shortening of the mast, funnel and superstructure, and rearranging the position of the missile launchers, were completed on August 15, 1992. Besides, some electronic equipment was modernized. The ship was fitted with the Garpun Air Target Detection Radar for anti-ship missiles, which was initially absent. The original RBU-1200 anti-submarine rocket launchers were replaced with the RBU-6000. Some sources claim Romania initially planned to build two vessels in this class and due to financial problems and the poor performance of the ship, the second one was cancelled. On April 1, 2001, Murasheshti was reclassified as Fregata, meaning frigate. The hull of Murasheshti has a flash deck design with a high freeboard and a slight shear at the bow. The ship's bulbous bow reduces drag. Still, the hull design below the waterline is problematic since it generates waves at low speeds. Murasheshti has a transom stern. Her flight deck is 27.7 meters long and 14.8 meters wide. Initially, the Romanian Navy planned to deploy two modified IAR-316B 
the Romanian licensed production variant of the Alouette 3 onto the ship. Currently, the frigate operates one IAR-330 Puma Naval, the Romanian licensed production variant of the SA-330 Puma. Even though Romania initially planned to power Mrasheshti with gas turbines, she has four diesel engines as the propulsion system. Still, due to the initial plan, the frigate has an unusual design for a diesel-powered surface combatant. The propellers on the outer shafts, driven by forward engine room engines, have adjustable pitch. On the other hand, the inner propellers, driven by engines in the aft engine room, have fixed pitch. Due to the use of shafts of the same length, the outer propellers are closer to the bow than the inner ones. The ship has two apron rudders behind the screws. This type of drive design with only engines driving individual propellers is generally preferred for gas turbine powered surface combatants. In 2001, as a part of integration works with NATO, Romania modernized some systems of Mrasheshti. This ship was fitted with a digital communication and identification system of the Mark 12 standard. GPS receivers, a satellite communication system and a Link 14 standard data exchange link with the KWR-46 concealment device were also added. The frigate was equipped with the Rakeldeka navigational radar. In 2007, the Danish TMA AS made Cflex computerized combat management system with MFC 2000 operator consoles were installed onto Mrasheshti. According to the official website of the Romanian Naval Forces, the complement of Mrasheshti is about 270 people. The ship has a length of 144.6 meters, a beam of 14.8 meters, and a draught of 7 meters. Her standard displacement is 4,754 tons, while its fully loaded displacement is 5,790 tons. Four 8,000 horsepower diesel engines provide a top speed of 27 knots. Her range is 2,800 nautical miles, in other words, 5,200 kilometers. Mrasheshti has four twin launchers for the P-21 anti-ship missiles, whose NATO reporting name is SSN-2C Styx. The P-21 with an infrared and radar seeker and a 454kg hollow charge warhead has a speed of Mach 0.9 and a range of 85km. The frigate has two 76mm twin-barrel AK-726 guns coupled with the MR-105 fire control system. The AK-726 has a 5-person crew. Its effective range is about 13,000 and 15,700 meters against air and surface targets, respectively. The gun had a theoretical rate of fire of 9 rounds per minute. But after every 40 to 45 round burst, the gun has to cease firing for cooling. Mrasheshti has four 6-barreled AK-630 close-in weapon system with a rate of fire of 5,000 rounds per minute and a range of about 5,000 meters. The ship's two RBU-6000 anti-submarine warfare rocket launchers have an effective range and depth of 5,230 and 1,000 meters, respectively. The frigate also has two triple-tube 533mm torpedo launchers firing 5365K or SET-53 torpedoes. Mrasheshti was the flagship of the Romanian Navy between 1985 and 2004. The Type 22 class frigate Regele Ferdinand, ex HMS Coventry, has stood the task since then. In 1998, Mrasheshti participated in the Strong Resolve 1998 exercise, which made her the first Romanian warship to sail in the Atlantic Ocean since the Second World War. During this mission, she operated an IAR 316B, which made it the first Romanian helicopter to fly over the Mediterranean and the Atlantic. Let's begin our analysis. Did Romania really need such a warship? If a Third World War happened, a possible NATO invasion armada had to overcome the mighty Soviet Black Sea Fleet before it reached the Romanian coasts. In that case, the Romanian Navy would not be able to stop a naval invasion or unblock a blockade enemy. If Moscow decided the overthrow of Ceausescu, the Romanian Navy would not be able to do anything to prevent this attempt. So, Romania did not really need a strong navy with a so-called cruiser in those years. However, Ceausescu believed in powerful symbols. A mighty navy, or at least one that looked so, was fundamental to him. Why did Romania design and build such a ship locally rather than acquiring? Wouldn't it be more practical to achieve this goal? 
The Romanians have always been free wheelers. The Ottoman Empire did not, more precisely could not directly rule the people of Romania. Malaysia and Moldova were the vassal states with high autonomy. Even though the Russians ended the Turkish rule in these lands, they could not annex Romania either. After the Second World War, Stalin forcefully made this country communist. Still, even the Romanian communists were rebellious. They quickly eliminated Stalinists in the party. Bucharest used the Soviet-Chinese split to defy the hegemony of the USSR. Nicolae Ceausescu, who came to power in 1965, kept this policy. He kept Romania in the Warsaw Pact, but also began the derasification policy and established good relationships with the West. He even actively and openly condemned the 1968 invasion of Czechoslovakia. Why did the USSR not crush the defies of Romania, like in Hungary and Czechoslovakia? Romania had no borders with a NATO member. This country was geographically important only because it was positioned southwest of the USSR. It was also enough for the USSR that Romania would not be with NATO in a possible Third World War. The 1973 oil crisis increased oil prices five times and so did the Romanian oil revenues. In the 1970s, Ceausescu had enough money for his crazy projects. Yet many of them had no economic returns. When the oil prices returned to normal, the Romanian economy deteriorated. Alongside other vessels, Mrasheshti had great potential for becoming a base for building up a naval industry. However, the financial difficulties stopped the progress. Accurate consideration of military requirements, strategic priorities, economic feasibility, healthy partnerships and technical capabilities are essential in a successful military project. The Romanian naval expansion program was just a matter of national pride. Ceausescu even refused to use foreign know-how in the project. Yes, France and Israel had already supported some Romanian military programs. However, the Western countries would not give technical support to a communist Warsaw Pact member in such a critical project, in any case, due to the risk of passing the knowledge to the USSR. So the result was obvious. Mrasheshti was doomed from the beginning. In fact, even Ceausescu did not want to have a powerful cruiser. It had no real combat value in a possible war. He just desired a powerful symbol. In this perspective, we might say that Mrasheshti served our creation purpose well. But why has Romania kept operating this surface combatant? Due to the economic and political turmoil in the New World, Romania could limitedly modernize its armed forces. Even though Mrasheshti was not a successful warship, she could launch anti-ship missiles and operate a helicopter. She was better than nothing. Why did Romania decommission the ship after acquiring the Type 22 class frigates? As we say, not only Ceausescu, but the Romanians were proud of their independence. They could not resist the power of such a symbol. Our regulars know we generally have a negative opinion of projects whose primary objective is to satisfy national pride. They are rarely successful. Mrasheshti is not an exception. Still, we should admit that this unusual frigate has very charming lines. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.